Hi everyone, you're welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky Setchere. I hope you're doing really well. So I have a guest on my channel today. As you know, I'm a UK registered nurse and I do videos giving tips and advice to internationally trained nurses who are already here or those who are still planning to relocate and come and work as a nurse. So in today's video with my guest, we're going to be talking about what to expect in UK hospital as overseas trained nurse. You should be aware everybody's experience is different. My experience 20 years ago is different to what newcomers are experiencing. So if you want to know more about this video, why not watch to the end? If you're new to my channel, you're very welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please remember to like, subscribe and share. And we shall see you in the video. Hi everyone, you're welcome to my channel. My name is Becky Setra, UK registered nurse, as I said in the introduction. So today I have a guest on my channel. We're going to be discussing what to expect in UK hospital as overseas trained nurse. Everybody's experience is different. So Eunice's experience may be different from your experience in whichever hospital you're working, but generally, there are certain things you can pick from what she's going to say. So I'm going to ask Eunice to introduce herself. Hello, everybody. Um, a very good evening or good afternoon to your viewers, wherever you're watching from. Uh, thank you, Auntie Becky, for having me. So my name is Eunice, and I'm, um, I'm a UK registered nurse, and I live in England, to be precise. Yes, Great. and I'm a band fan. Well done. You're welcome. I'm sure you've been here for almost three years now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So <laughs> you're not new, very well experienced uh, overseas trained nurse working in the UK. So how long did you work in Ghana before moving over to the UK? Okay. So back in Ghana, I worked for like over six years Okay. in Ghana before I moved to the UK. Yes. So you trained... First of all, in the nursing training, is it? And then you did your degree? Tell yes. Me a so I bit. trained. Oh, yes. I trained in um, Kolebu Nursing Training okay. College. Yes. Where I did my diploma. And then whilst I did my degree as well in uh, University of Ghana, Lagon. So oh. that's where I got my degree as well, my BSc. Well done. So how Great. did you choose the hospital you're working at currently in England? Oh, okay. So, um, to be honest with you, uh, there was at a time where there were lots of people saying there's an agency here, they can help you. There's an agency here, they can help you and all of that. So I tried to um, contact a few that I knew. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, I think that that's when the red list, all of that red list thing came about where um WHO didn't want some countries to, you know, people to actively recruit people into England. So, they all sort of backed up, like nobody was really responding to me. So I was like, well, I'm not ready to write my IELTS and, you know, just sit down and let it go away. So um, I did my own search. I went to an NHS website and went to search for jobs. So I just go, I look through, even if the person doesn't say he's not ready to pick um, someone from Ghana or like maybe act he's not actively taking a foreign trained nurse, I'll just send an email to the recruiter and say, this is me, my name is this, um, I've passed CBT. So I went on NHS website and then this particular trust was actually advertising that they were interested in getting overseas trained nurses. So that's where I, I sent an email to the recruiters and then they got back to me. Good, well done. So that's what most people don't know, isn't it? Some people think they have to go through their agencies, but yeah. because of what you said regarding the red list thing, most mm -hmm. the agencies are not recruiting from overseas anyway. So you have yeah. to do the job yourself. You have to go yeah. on the NHS job sites or track jobs and all those, exactly. you know, exactly. and then find exactly. the jobs yourself. And you have to exactly. do the work yourself, isn't it? 
Yes, yes. And it's not too it's not too hard, to be honest yeah. with you. I just think that sometimes people are not proactive enough. To be honest, I had several job offers as well, you mm. see. So um sometimes with the help of some of you, of course. And mm. other YouTube channel. <laughs> I mean, there's so many, there's so much information on what you could you could do, what you're supposed to do, and what you're supposed to look out for. And people have colleagues that are already in the UK. Now the information, nobody is hiding such information any longer. So when you contact, I mean, even you yourself, you're so I mean, I got to know you because of that, because I was asking you questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're making you know, my head swell. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So, Auntie Becky, guys, Auntie Becky is so <laughs> remarkable, to be honest with you. She mm -hmm. will give you all the information you need. She'll give you the options and all of that. So, it's not difficult at all. If you reach out to them, if you want to know how to construct a CV, anything you need to do, everything is on the internet. And there are lots of YouTube um, videos to show you how to go about all of these things. So, um, it's not difficult at all. Yeah. So, where you are now, did you know anyone there before applying? No, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, listen, my aunt, my aunt lives in London, okay. So, yes, I know someone in England, my aunt lives in London and she's happy to accommodate me. But, but for some reason, I didn't actually want to live in London. Um, so, um, I applied for several jobs. I said, I got this trust, I got other places as well in England and all of that. But I don't, the day I just decided to settle for this trust, so I didn't know anyone here. Okay, so on your arrival, were you offered accommodation by the trust? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, so for how um, long? I was. Um. So when we came in, we were given a really nice apartment. I, I should say it was a really nice apartment. It was you. brand new. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. But for me and my housemate, we can't <laughs> complain at all. It was really nice. It was a new furnished apartment. Okay. Everything. In fact, when I can vividly remember my first day, <laughs> I practically had um, an, um, an Asda delivery guy waiting for me with my um, groceries because they asked me what I would like to um, have, you know, like what kind of groceries do I like? And then they got all of those things. So they were practically waiting for me at my doorstep. So, yes, they got it for us for three months. And then um, after three months, uh, it was becoming a bit challenging getting um, accommodation because I wanted somewhere that was close to the hospital so that I don't have to, because I've not started driving or anything else at that time yet. So um, they got it for us for that three months and then we later extended to five months just to get places of our own. So yes, they did. They did get us Was it free or did you have to, was it deducted from your salary? Oh yes. Um, the, the first, the, the subsequent two months that we had to stay there, it wasn't free. So we had to pay, obviously, because what the trust did agree on was three months. Okay. And so, yeah, so, but, you know, we, we it, it was a time of COVID, you know, ending sort of, you know, there is, there is not there. So at that time, finding new homes was not that pretty easy because, Sometimes it was just virtual viewing and, you know, so there were a whole lot of things uh, associated with that. But uh, eventually we, we all got the places that we wanted and then we all moved in. But for the past two months, yes, we paid for it. It was okay. my friend got hers deducted from her salary. Um, they gave us a relocation package anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, she got hers deducted from that. And then I think I got mine deducted from my salary. So yeah. this relocation package that some trusts give, it does that make you like contracted so that you can't leave for a number of years or you have to pay back if you want to leave them? Um yeah, so it depends it's it's per trust by trust. Yeah. So for mine, which obviously I can speak for, yeah. yes, you when they give you the relocation um allowance or whatever, it's sort of contributes takes care of all the expenditure even okay. to your visa fee your OSCE fee and all of that mm -hmm. so um for us some people it bounce them for two years three years depending and when you have to leave then you might have to just refund whatever for our trust i think um for this particular trust if you want to leave then you have to refund everything 
<laughs> even if it's one day. But mm-hmm. I've got friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got friends who were in other trust that it was just a day, a, a year. So after a year, they were free to move on. Mm-hmm. Yes, and then also others too that you just pay what they presume is left. You know, maybe you're supposed to be with them for two years. And then you, after a year, you want to leave. So they say, okay, pay, at least you stay with us for a year or something. So we could agree on you doing something. But the thing is, you are not entitled to pay upfront. You could go with an agreement with them and say, all right, I want to pay monthly hundred pound till I'll be done with whatever I have to pay you off. And then you're allowed to go. So that's not bad, Mm, isn't it? So um, how long did your OSCE preparation take? Wow. I was, mm. was super quick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <it> was, <laughs> yes, I was, was so super quick because ideally it should be, I think, three three months there about, like, you know, because we come in, you, you, yeah. So uh, when we came in, they were like, <laughs> we got some money from, um England um higher education England or something you know so yeah so they just wanted to see that okay let's try and see if we could prep you up so actually we we wrote it like in a month because oh. okay yeah yeah we wrote it in a month uh, um so what they did was initially when people come in they'll work on the ward and then go for class but looking at our schedule, we, they had to stop that routine. So, so we were just um, going to for the lectures and then training and practices and then coming back home. So, mm-hmm. yes, some of us passed once and um, others had to go rewrite. But to be fair, yeah, it was it was OK. It was it was. It, it's not anything that you don't know. I mean, for you to be a nurse in your home country, just so there are a few things that are quite different from here. You just have to take note. But aside that. It wasn't, it was, it was okay. <laughs> and because of the COVID at that time as well, they needed staff on the ward, isn't it? So you finished exactly. and then you're dropped onto the ward. And how was exactly. the ward experience? <laughs> <laughs> well, the ward experience, uh, the ward experience, um, it's got every bit of it. It's got good and the other side, which is not that good. Was there any but, culture uh, show? Yeah, carry on. <laughs> Oh yes, a lot, a lot. There was a lot, and there was a lot. You know, it's here that you get to know that. I mean, back home in Ghana, tea is tea, tea is milo, tea is tea, tea is coffee. <laughs> but here, you get to know that no, we've got tea, one sugar, <laughs> with specific details and all of that. Yes. But um, in all, um, yeah, there were a few culture shocks like um. I mean, that's what we think sometimes coming coming from Africa. We think everybody um, knows everything about, which they should know. I mean, what Africa is, where Africa is. But some people don't know. They don't even know what it entails. They don't even know how different um, everybody's coming from different countries. I think most of them knew Nigeria often, but, um, you know, it's like everybody thinks everybody's coming from Nigeria and all of that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so these are some of the things but aside that they, we had some lovely people on there uh, as well um it was great experience i mean getting to uh, um come to an environment that more like exposed to sophisticated equipment um you know different ways of doing things you're meeting patients but even skin color i mean how to check for pressure area damage was that's another thing that was more new to to me because back home in Ghana people don't really develop pressure damage like that they do but it's not like the yeah. normal maybe someone who's bedridden but here um anybody can develop pressure damage due to the nature and so these were some of the new things that uh, we encountered and of course the cold the new food <laughs> we have to adapt to bland non-spicy diets um yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know it was good. <laughs> and, then and drink it, tea more often. <laughs> yeah, as you said, with the tea, we call everything tea back I'm home. I'm telling you. But and over I'm... here, tea is tea. Some people mm-hmm. like it dark, uh, strong. Some people like it no no milk, no sugar. You know, if someone One patient wants... told me that he wants his coffee Beyonce color. I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. So having to oh learn God. all of those things, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. is there any, so I have left Ghana um, or I've practiced in Ghana 20 years ago. So my question to you, living just about three years ago, did you find any difference between the nursing practice in Ghana as compared to UK? Well, um, yes, based on the policies, you know, it's not the scale because based on the scale, most of the things that we were taught in nursing training college yeah, and coming through practice is similar. I mean, but um, here are the few things that are major, things that might not look major in Ghana is a major thing here. For example, checking for allergies. Yeah, it's it's a major thing here. True. You know, checking for expiry dates, and it's based on the fact that the packaging which we use back home is not necessarily the same. So these are the things that you know you need to get accustomed with, and the terminologies. You know, um, there's certain things that we say differently in Ghana; they say it here differently. So, but I think it all comes along with the job as you get on with the job. It comes on along with you. I mean, if you don't know, it doesn't hurt to ask. You yeah, just ask, true. what does this mean? Yes. And some um, ward managers are phenomenal, I would say. Uh, um, some would actually give you a handbook, like my manager did that anyway. And then she gave like a sort of a file, um, gave us prints of like some of the terminologies that might they might be using, you know, so that you get accustomed with it. And then of course, as the job went by, we asked as well if you, you weren't sure about it. It's important to ask if people are not sure, isn't it? It's better to oh, look yes. stupid by asking than pretend people know and you go and make to, a mistake. To, to, to be honest with you, there's nothing like being stupid because yes. they equally we that's what I want to say. We equally make people that are coming from here that don't know certain things as well that you also know. So I would say don't be intimidated at all. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be intimidated at all. There is nothing like being stupid because if you don't ask and you go and cause an error, nobody is mm -hmm. going to forgive you. True. So please, it's it is in your right to ask. It's just like somebody who will come to Ghana and say, you say it's a saying, and it's like, and there's an English and says it's a saying. What does that mean? Does and that that's mean? the entry means. How are you doing? So you won't say that white person is stupid, would you? So yeah. there's nothing wrong with you saying. What do you mean by taking blood? Because we don't say taking blood in Ghana. We say maybe we are taking FBC, and then you should be able to ask in specification what kind of blood am I taking? Because that's what they'll say. So there's nothing wrong with you asking. asking. It yeah. doesn't make you stupid. It makes yeah. you know that you know what you're doing and yeah. you need to ask before you, you, you do what you're supposed to do, yes. And in addition to what you said, another thing I was going to say is about complaints and incidents or datics, they call it at certain places. Back home, we don't have a lot of datics. When I was yeah, back, when we, back when we do verbal dates, <laughs> I say <laughs> no written dates. <laughs> yeah, do verbal. We don't have time to write all of those things. <laughs> well, yes, yes. I mean, here, if anything, anything happens, wrong, that is an yeah. incident. Yes, back home we do have an incident book. We do. We have mm -hmm. something called an incident book that if there's anything that happens that was unusual you put them in so there is that's ours it's there but the thing is we don't take certain things too high you know like maybe um certain things are there but here yes mind you the little thing anybody could date us well one way or the other it's way of they um being accountable for things that yeah. happen anyway True. so it's not like they are wrong but and um, you just if you're doing everything what you're supposed to do you will not find anybody they texting you or anything. And even if sometimes they, they text you on anything, you have a chance to, you know. To learn out uh, of it. Yeah, to learn. You have a chance to speak for speak for yourself, defend yourself. There's That's nobody true. who's going to say, they text you about anything and your own manager will not call you. If, then they are, not, they are not ready to call it an incident then. Because yeah. ideally, yeah, they should call you, have your statement as well. Yeah. and know what side of what happened anyway but it's not even just the data is not just about 
you doing something wrong. No. Even in our, if somebody develops a pressure area damage, we did test it. That's There's true. an incident that true. happened. If it's a CD error, it does anything. So it's not practically like, ah, is like punishment uh, or anything. No. No, that's not it. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now you've been here almost three years now. How do you find life in general working in the UK? Well, um, uh, being honest, I mean, it's been a roller coaster, I would say. It's been um, a bit of everything. It's been good. It's been great. There have been times that you, we felt bored and all of that. There were times that we're not happy about one or two things that happened at work. But um, in all, it's been a learning process. It's been a good learning process. Um, I would say that I've learned a lot. Um, I've added on to my career. Yes, I have. Um, I've become more bolder in other things, like things that sometimes you might be like, oh, how do you do about this? How do you go about some of these things? Has become quite easy on my fingertips and all of that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been like that. Um, it, it definitely would make you grow, become better, mm -hmm. you know. Um, yes, have there been good times? There have been good times. There have been challenges as well. They have. There is nothing like, there isn't any challenge. That's not true. Yes, there could be challenges in all, but there's always a procedure and there's always something you can do about it. There isn't anything that could put you in a box or anything. So if you're going through any form of um, discrimination, anxiety, stress at work, please talk to somebody, yeah. you know, just talk to someone. Um, Auntie Becky is always there. There are lots of other um, supportive YouTube bloggers, nurses who are given this kind of information. You can reach out to them. Yeah, but don't ever um, keep it to yourself and then suffer um, in silence. You know, just speak up and then let people know. So, you know, it's been good. I've had great times. Um, I've visited lots of places. Um, I've enjoyed English food. I've got my own favorites. <laughs> and yeah, I've met great patients. Oh my God. I've met elderly people. I've yeah. never nursed some people in hundreds. I've nursed people in hundreds now, oh. you know. It, it was one of the things that was, it was really dear to me in a way, you know, seeing somebody lead to 105, 102. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And um, I've learned a lot in terms of my skills, you know, I've improved. I I know so many things that I wasn't privileged to know. I think there's been an addition, you know, to what I I was doing back home. So it's been it's been great. It's been great. It's as uh, not to say yes, it has its own challenges, yeah. but we've had good times as well. <laughs> as as you yeah. said, life in general, regardless of where you are, has its own challenges, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back home. Mm -hmm. We have challenges back home. If you go to the US, Canada, wherever, you will exactly. definitely face challenges. But it is how you manage or work around those challenges. And as you yeah. said, it's important to speak to someone when you're going through these difficult times. I can exactly. see you are speaking like a brofu now. <laughs> Oh, in fact, in fact, in fact. Um, so in general, what would be your advice to someone who actually is planning to move and work in the UK as a nurse? What would you say to them? Oh, um, I would say that if it's if it's your is something that you really really want is something that you you'd like, then yes, let's go for it. And yeah. um, when I was decided to to come over to the UK or join or stay, yeah. there was one thing that I told um a friend of mine. I told her that you know, I've I've lived in Ghana, I've nursed in Ghana, I've practiced in Ghana. I know what Ghana is like. Yeah. If I don't go, if I never go to the UK, I would never know what it's, it tastes like. Yeah. So if I stay back, I would say I would, uh, it will just be uh, something out. I've been telling people, oh, I once had an opportunity to go to the UK. You cannot tell what it tastes like because you never experienced it. Yeah. So if it's something really that it's something that you like, yes, go for it. 
if you are writing your IELTS, your CBT, and you are not, you know, making headway, be determined, you know, be determined and then sit down. For example, don't, if you don't, you don't have to listen to anybody. Hmm. Um, and, you know, if it's something that you really, really uh, want. And uh, however, if you've got um, a very fulfilling job back home in Ghana hmm. and you are earning really good, hmm. you know, because I, I know people who are earning something like, um, let's say, over 10,000. I'm not, it's not everybody. This is not to everybody. We are not trying to discourage anybody. We're just trying to give you the bare fact so that you decide for yourself. But if you are doing really good and you have extra businesses that you are doing and um, you know you cannot handle certain stress and pressure, mm -hmm. then I would say it's best to practice back home, yeah. to be honest. And then maybe sure. come over for courses and yeah. But if you are very young, single like me, <laughs> that you don't have, and you know that there's nothing to <laughs> to leave behind. <laughs> to lose, yes, and, yes. and aside, some people are equally married, but they've got a very good like supportive system that you know they come in. But I will always say that don't sell properties like land and house just because you want to come to the UK. Yeah, take your time. Yeah. Um. Add on. Do all the things that you want to do, and then prepare towards it. But I mean, of course, there are certain monies that you have to put in anyway to make sure that you pass your exams and all of that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I wish everybody the best. It's doable. I. Uh, it's very doable to pass your IELTS. It's doable to yeah. pass your SK as well. Yeah, I agree completely so, with you. Yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's it. And have an open mind. Whatever mm -hmm. is in Ghana is in the UK. There's a good boss in Ghana. There's a, a good boss in UK. You can meet, and meet somebody who's not so nice. It's the same thing. So don't come, don't, don't carry any form of, um, yeah, it's different. It's it's every everything you are seeing in Ghana can be found here as well. So have a very open mind. Yeah. And then, as I said, if anything is bothering you in terms of whatever, you're finding any challenge that is beyond you, don't keep it to yourself. Speak to somebody. There are lots of people around that can help you. Yeah. Yes, and then um, that's it. And all yeah. the best to anybody. That's right. I do agree with what you said about if you're in a good position back home, you're earning good amount of money. The question is, do you really want to come and start from the bottom? Do you really can you take some of the challenges? You know, and mm -hmm. so yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's the end of it. Thank you so yeah. much for joining me. Thank you for your time, Eunice. You're and welcome. um I hope. I would have you again another time. Sure. Yes, sure. if we have something else going on, I'll have you again. So Yeah, it was a pleasure coming here. Thank you. Thank Take you care, too, then. Andrew. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>